Hello hey students, um, on this clip we're going to be uh, going over the derivation of the quadratic uh, formula. So what we're going to do, uh, do is we're going to start out with the standard form for um, quadratic equations. So the standard form for quadratic equations um, is given by ax squared, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So this is the standard form for all quadratic equations. So if you if you set it put it in this form basically have everything equal to zero and put the degrees in the same order, then um, you can apply the quadratic formula. Okay. So I'm going to start out with a formulation that's consistent that enables me to be able to apply the quadratic formula, and then I'm going to derive the quadratic formula from here. Okay. So uh, the algorithm I'm going to, about to use is simply known as the completing the square algorithm. Okay. Completing the square. All right, I'm going to use the completing the square algorithm to generate the quadratic formula. Remember, the completing the square algorithm always works um, for all quadratic equations, regardless of if it's factorable or not. So since the quadratic formula is a, is a result of this, then that's why the quadratic formula um, always works for all kinds of quadratic equations, okay? So completing the square just basically involves creating the perfect square trinomial on the left side, and then getting rid of the square root and isolating the x. All right, so let's go ahead and do, the, do it. So when you're completing the square, first thing you want to do is um, you want to make this a term that makes this a perfect square trinomial, all right? I don't know if this works, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to toss this c over, and I'm going to put in a term that actually makes, I'm sure that is a perfect square trinomial, all right? So subtract c from both sides, and we're going to have the equation ax squared plus bx equals negative c. Okay? Now, to complete this square on the left side, I need to add a term here to make this a perfect square trinomial. But I need the first term to be a perfect square. All right? So this a is kind of getting on my nerves, so I need to get rid of this a so that I'll just have x squared by itself, because I'm sure that x squared is a perfect square, because when I root x squared, what do I get? I get x. Okay? So first thing I want to do is let's clean up the first term to make sure it's a perfect square, and then we're going to determine uh, what term we can add here to create a perfect square trinomial, all right? So um, I'm going to make this a perfect square by getting rid of this a. To do that, I'll divide everything by a. So divide the first term by a, the next term by a, and then that last term over there by a. Oh, by a, okay? So if you divide the whole equation by a on both sides, we still have the same thing, okay? So the a is here reduced, we're going to have x squared, a goes here 1, a goes here 1, plus b over ax equals negative c over a. Okay? Now this is a perfect square. Excellent. Now, I need another, I need a term here that makes this a perfect square trinomial. Um, since the product of, um, well, since I need to make that happen, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use to find the, 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 the term that makes this a perfect square trinomial, I'm going to add b over 2 square uh, to both sides. Okay, I'm going to add b over 2 square here and b over 2 square, 2 square there. All right. So the reason being that whenever you have a perfect square trinomial, when you read the first term and the last term, the square root of the first term and the last term, when you double it, you get um, the middle term. So when you if you um, divide the middle term by 2 and square it, you know, and square it and divide by 1, you're going to have the last term over here. So we're basically working backwards, all right? So b over 2 squared is what you're going to use to complete the square over here. So uh, what is b in this case? Um, a is the coefficient of the first term, which is a 1. Uh, b is going to be b over, t b over a. Okay, so that's what I, exactly what I need. So in this case, b is going to be b over a, so that's what I'll substitute here. All right, so instead of b, I'm going to have, uh, let me put it in blue, b over a divided by 2, and I'm going to square that. Okay, how on earth did this happen? Because b in this problem is uh, actually the coefficient of x, which is b over a. All right, so I'm going to divide it by 2, and I'm going to square it. Now, this looks really complicated. This expression I came up with here looks really complicated. So how do I um, simplify it? 
Well, since that is a fraction, how about I make this a fraction? Divide that by 1, all right? So, how do you divide fractions? Uh, what you do is you basically, I can write it like this, b over a divided by uh, 2 over 1, okay? So, when you're dividing fractions, you can write it in this form, and then I'm going to drop change flip. I'm going to multiply the numerator or the first term by the reciprocal of this, all right? So, I'm going to have b over a, and I'm going to multiply this by... 1 over 2. So whenever you divide, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Alright, so I just reciprocate at the bottom and then times it by the top. Alright, so this is going to become b over, b times 1 is b on the bottom, over 2a squared. Alright, when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply across. Okay, so simplifying that further, we're going to have b squared over, when you square 2, you get 4. When you square a, you get a squared, okay? So b squared over 4a squared will, is what I'll insert here to make it a perfect uh, square trinomial, all right? So uh, I'm going to now have x squared plus b over a x. I'm going to add this, b over 2 squared, I'm going to put it in blue, plus b squared over 4a squared. To the left side, should I just add it to the left side? Absolutely not. You have to add it to both sides of the equation to preserve equality. If I add it to only one side, then I'm basically changing the problem. All right, so there you have it. Okay, now we have a perfect square trinomial on the left side. Uh, I'll, I'll show you why in a minute. So what we're going to do, we're going to factor it using the factoring trick. I'll read the first term and read the last term. And then I'll bring down the middle, middle sign, okay? All I'm doing is just the completing the square algorithm. If you know that, this will be a breeze for you, okay? So the square root of x squared is x plus the square root of b squared is b on the numerator. In the denominator, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of a squared is a. And that whole thing, quantity squared, okay? Notice that if I, if I multiply this and this together and I double it, I'm going to get the middle term, okay? That shows that this is a perfect square trinomial. On the right side, I'm going to switch these around. This is positive. I like the right positive one first. So I'm going to have b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Now I need to add these two fractions together. So basic fraction rules is if you want to add two fractions, the denominators have to be the same. So what I'll do is I know that this is 4a squared, so I need this to become um, the same as that, right? So what's the LCD here? I don't know. Let me break it down so that we don't get confused here, b over 2a squared equals b squared. I'm going to break this down so we can easily find the LCD. Okay, so it's 4, oh, sorry. It's 2, it's, um, it's 2, 4, 8, 8, 8, 8 on the left side, minus c over a. Okay, now to find the LCD, this has an a already, so this side needs two twos and an, and an, and an a, all right? So I, gotta have, I have to put it here. So. To make the denominators equal, I have to times this by a 2, another 2 for that one, and then another a for that one right there. So you see they're not, they're not equivalent, the denominators. You have two a's and two twos, so two a's and two twos, good. So whatever you times by the bottom, you have to times it by the top, so you don't change the fraction, like that, okay? All right, now putting everything together, back together, we're going to have x, b over 2a, with the left side alone nicely factored. On the right side, I'm going to have b squared over 4a, my, oh, sorry, 4a squared minus, if I times all this together, I'm going to have um, 4ac over uh, 4a squared. All right. Now the denominator is the same on the left side. I cannot combine it. Okay. So we're going to have x plus b over 2a squared equals, now here, b squared minus 4ac on the numerator divided by 4a squared, okay? Now we're still working on completing the square algorithm to... We're done completing the square here, now I want to isolate x. So to isolate x on the left side, I need to just square root it, to get rid of the square. And then I'm going to subtract v over 2a to get x isolated, all right? So it's like we're peeling an onion, right? Uh, we start from the outermost operation and then working our way in, all right? So let's get rid of the square first. So to get rid of the square, we use the opposite of a square, which is square root. So we root that, roots to the top, and roots to the bottom. 
square root everything, all right? Left and right. On the left side, the square and the square roots cancel each other out. So we're going to have x plus b over 2a equals, on the right side, the numerator is, like, is b squared minus 4ac divided by, in the denominator, if you root 4, you get 2. If you root a squared, you get a. Okay? Almost there. Now, you want to know that when you take the square root of a square, you have to introduce um, plus or minus. Yes, yeah, so you have to put a plus or minus, plus or minus there. All right? Okay. Now, uh, let, me, then let me do another. There's, oh, I can do it that way. That's fine. Okay. So, you have plus or minus because you took the square root of a square right there. Um, and then now, to finish it up, you just simply um, subtract b over 2a from both sides. Subtract b over 2a from both sides. And then uh, you're going to have x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus, because you took the square root of a square, uh, root b square minus 4ac over 2a. Now, since the denominators are the same, we can combine them into one fraction. So we're going to have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b square minus 4ac, all, all over 2a. Let me rewrite that again. b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay? There you have it. So just the, the, the only technical part here is don't forget whenever you take the square root of a square, you have plus or minus introduce the one. one well, either side of the equation, it doesn't really matter where you put it. Okay? So there goes your quadratic formula. Um, derived from the standard form for quadratic equations, all right? So thanks for paying attention to this presentation. Um, you please subscribe to my videos for future updates and cool uh, methods just like this. You can share this video with your friends. Um, more videos on magdoserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful